This is a quick video on getting started with your portfolio. Now this is not about the content that you put in your portfolio, we'll have a separate video on that. This is just the technical stuff on getting started. So the first thing you're going to need to do is to log into your cqulaw.net account and um, set up your account there. Now these accounts have been created for you and they are on the Google Apps for Education platform. Now, very quickly, the difference between this and your CQU Mail account. Your CQU Mail account is your official university account. So all your official things connect to that, your official university mail, Moodle, anything you need to log into the university website to get access to. CQULaw.net, on the other hand, um, is a service that's been provided to us by Google, and it gives us access to the whole suite of business apps. Um, that you usually have to pay for that they're giving us for free. At the beginning, we're just going to be using this to create portfolios, but there are a whole series of other um, tools that come with it. So it comes with a, uh, an email account, like a Gmail account. It comes with Google Docs, Google Drive, Google Calendar, all the things you get with a normal Google account. The key difference between these things, I guess, is first of all, the CQU Mail account is the official one. The official one that we're for doing business with the university. The cqulaw.net one is a um, gives us a lot of bonus extras that honestly the university couldn't afford to provide for us that Google are generously giving us access to. The other key difference is when you graduate your CQU mail account will close down and you'll no longer have access to any of the um, resources there. However your cqulaw.net, your Google account, will continue onward and um, you'll be able to continue to uh, have your portfolio and anything else that you build or use in that site. So I think that's a big benefit to everyone as well. Now your CQU LawNet account will be your first name dot your second name at cqulaw.net. That will be your username. Now if there is something unusual about your name, for instance you might be John Smith the third John Smith we've had in the program, you'll get an email explaining what um, account name will give you. Your password will be set, everyone's will be set the same at the start, which will be Ace Attorney. One word, two capital A's. The first thing you'll be asked to do when you get into your account is to change that to something personal. Okay, so to log into your account, the first thing you're going to need to do is to go to the URL accounts.google.com and if you like, me, you're already logged into your other um, Gmail account, so we need to go sign into a different account, add account. Now this is where you put in your new username, which remember is first name dot second name. This is a dummy account, so it's just called dummy. Next. And you enter your password, which will be Ace Attorney and sign in. Now the very first thing it'll ask you to do is to change it to a different password. So pick one that's secure and that you're going to remember. And hopefully I've done this right. That looks much better. And this will take you into your Google account screen. Um, you're all logged in up here. If you need to change your accounts you can click here and you can add accounts and sign out which is very useful. And the other thing that's useful here is you can set your password recovery options here. So signing into Google here, um, you can change your sign in method, you can add a recovery account, you can add a recovery phone number uh, there as well. So that's a good way of rather than having to email me when things go wrong, actually setting up um, a recovery account to maybe your, um, your um, personal email or maybe your university email account. Now your account will also give you a Gmail account and it's probably a good one if you don't have a professional email account which um, you want to use for job interviews and so on and job applications, this is probably a good one to use. Um, I want to show you something very quickly before we get onto the portfolios and that's how to forward your mail from this account because you may not want to use this account at all. Um, you may want to um, just use your other accounts. So if you don't want to miss out on any email that might come to this account, you go to settings settings here, um, forwarding, pop and IMAP, add a forwarding address. And now you can add a forwarding address in here 
that'll send all the mail that comes to this account to perhaps your university mail account or your personal Gmail account. Now, if you go to the main page, the main portfolio page, and the URL is here, and I'll put a link below, um, this will show you the uh, terms and conditions of use of your portfolio. So have a quick read of that. Um, as lawyers, you should be used to terms and conditions, or you'll soon become used to terms and conditions, and basically just says you need to use this for, for professional purposes and not to start running some kind of pirate empire out of the site. So if you breach those terms and conditions, you, you will have your account. You will lose your account with us. Okay, now on to the good stuff. If you go to the following URL, um, sites google.com a CQU law not portfolio slash um, your first name dash your second name and admittedly that is a very ugly URL um, but we'll look at um, things you can do with that in a moment um, it will bring up access to your page now if I've set the permissions up right you'll get this top bar across here which has all your editing rights and editing permission for the page normal people will only see the bottom part of the page below that when you give them the URL. Now that URL that you have will be a universal one and it means that anyone with that link can view your portfolio page and the best way to include this say in a job application or in social networking would be to include it as a link. You wouldn't necessarily ask a person to type in that whole um, domain name, that whole URL. Um, and there are ways around it. So you can buy, you can use a bit.ly link if you wanted to make it shorter or you might want to buy your own custom domain name. So um, we can discuss later some of the options around getting around that, that particular ugly domain name. But for the moment, for the sake of clarity, um, this gives us a very clear direction to where your um, portfolio page is. Now, to um, when you have a look at the portfolio, it'll be built on a template which has all this information in here for you to fill in. Edit it, you just click on the pencil here and you move down and you start editing. You start typing edits here. Um, there are some options across the top here in terms of formatting and there's also some further topics, uh, further headings here. So you can do things like you can um, change the, um, it puts headings in, um, you can put tables in, let's not worry about that for the moment, but the important one is here, insert. You can insert links, you can insert, insert images, and you can insert all kinds of documents that you've saved in your Google Drive. So you can say, put Google Drops, drawings, folders, forms, videos, you can include YouTube videos and everything in here. So let's quick, quickly look at including an image. So we'll put include an image. Um, let's upload an image. Let's find something random from my list of things here, uh, which of course I do have the copyright to, which is always important. And um, you can include the image and there you go, the image will be in your page. Um, so there will be advanced tutorials as time goes on uh, about um, embedding different things, but for the moment the first thing you need to really worry about is the text. Um, it auto saves, there's a save button as well but you can hit save to make sure it saves. And one of the interesting things about the way um, the portfolio works is if you go up to here and you go to revision history, it will tell you um, exactly at what point um, the page was edited and revised. And you can actually revert to previous versions. So if you've got in and edited a lot of things and you don't like what you've done and you think, oh, I want to go back to the earlier version, you can easily go there and um, revert to the earlier version. Now we've also included a link to a, um, a fictional portfolio to give you an example of the, the way a finished portfolio might look or at least a work in progress portfolio because one of the things of these things about portfolios is that they're always a work in progress. You're always updating, you're always adding, you're always finding better pieces of evidence to put in. But I think um, the fictional one will give you a bit of an example of the sort of thing that we're looking for and the sort of things that you can include. So have fun with it. Remember, you can't break it. Um, and if you do break it, we can revert to a previous version. So the important thing here is to make sure that you get your confidence up, you play around with it before, well before the due date, 
and that you start thinking about the sorts of interesting things you've done, the interesting skills you've had, and what digital evidence you can include to, to beef up your portfolio and to make it a really convincing statement of who you are.